Hey everybody, when I first looked at this problem, I thought the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality was uh, the best approach. But then it turns out the, the guy at Coco showed a way involving substitution that's a lot easier. So we're looking for an integer m that's less than or equal to this expression. Okay, that's where the largest positive integer. They say largest positive integer uh, less than, and we should probably say less than or equal to uh, a priori, you know. Uh, so. Uh, we have this expression, uh, and the best approach, as far as I can tell, is to take advantage of the fact that um, the unit circle definition, basically, is our savior in terms of uh, finding some magnitude for this expression. So uh, sine squared x plus cosine squared, and this is almost like the definition, uh, it's, it's the unit circle definition of uh, the trig version of it, I guess. Okay, but it's a unit circle definition, and it's defined for all uh, real valued x because you can spin around as much as you want in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. All right, so this is for all real x, measured in radians, I suppose. And so anyway, this turns out to be quite useful because we can make this nice substitution, okay? And again, there's a way to do this with Cauchy-Schwartz. Just I think this might be a little easier because it just involves completing the square, basically. Okay, and so if you make these substitutions, these two statements follow right here. Okay, uh, so um, now what we can do right here is, is just convert our original expression in terms of A. Okay, so again, you can take a look here at the algebra. It's fairly straightforward. Um, and the idea will be to get to a spot where we can complete the square, and you will be able to just find the answer. You know, and again, just this substitution handles the trig side of it, and the rest of it's just pure algebra, basic algebra, fairly basic algebra. Completing the square is a little nasty, but uh, uh, when you expand this out, this is what you end up with. And you know the standard drill about completing the square, all right? Um, you uh, take half, uh, you take half of the coefficient, all right? And the half of the coefficient is just 33 over 50. Now, the reason why that holds is essentially this. Uh, if you have x squared uh, uh, minus uh, 2xy, which is the form this is in, plus y squared, all right? See, this is half of 36, okay? So this would be in the form uh, x minus y quantity squared. So really, it's this identity in reverse. Okay, they just tell you to do that as a matter of rote. And people just kind of memorize this process called complete the square, but it's because of this identity. Again, these terms right here after the factorization is exactly in this format, okay? This is double. This is half of that, right? See, uh, so in other words, this is really, you know, fairly straightforward. Uh, it's just you take half of this object based on this identity, and that's what this is right here, okay? Half of 66 is 33, okay? And then, of course, you have to correct your mistake, which is what I did right here. This is a cleverly disguised version of zero right here, folks. Okay, and if those of you already know how to complete the square, this isn't hard, but dealing with a fraction sometimes is a pain in the ass. Most of the time, they're just nice integer uh, coefficients here. We're actually dealing with rational values, okay? So we're good to here. Now let's keep on moving. Um, Y'all, the rest of this literally is just taking the values out. I tried to do as much as I could right here. Let's see. Uh, we doing all right? Yeah. Um, what happened here, folks? You see how this is 33 squared over 50? One of these 50s canceled with the, what would be a 50 squared right here, right? This is 50, and this would be 50 squared. That's why we're just left with 50 right here, okay? So something did happen. We multiplied 50 times 33 squared over 50 squared. Everything remained the same except you have 50 instead of 50 squared right here. Okay, and the rest of it's fairly routine arithmetic. Um, 50 times 33 is 1650. Uh, if you the subtraction is painful by hand, slightly painful by hand, but you end up with this expression right here. Okay, so it's clear that when a is equal to 33 over 50. Uh, when a is equal to 33 over 50, not that you hardly have to write that down, but you're going to reach a minimum value. 
okay, when A is equal to 33 over 50, and that minimum value, uh, that implies that this entire expression, this entire, this goes to zero, right? And this is just the standard thing about completing the square and why that achieves mins or maxes for your parabola, you know? But this part right here will become zero. And then whatever this is equal to, uh, uh, that implies 561. Again, this entire expression becomes 561 over 50. Now notice this is not an integer, but this is equal to, let's see, 50 times 11 is 550. And so you would get 11 and 11 fiftieths. So this would just be an answer, you know, if the, if the problem didn't call for an, inter, the, uh, call for an integer. The, the graph of this function would never be, would always be above this value. In other words, the graph of this function right here, uh, 17, uh, would always be, let me just, what was the number again? 561 over, uh, or, or 11 and 11 fiftieths, yeah, yeah. So uh, this, the graph of this function would be um, right here. Let's see, the graph of this function, where are we at, folks? Sorry. Uh, would be less than uh, 11 and 11 fiftieths, right? If we weren't calling for an integer. Okay, let me, let me, y'all, let me just go down one more time, make sure I forgot the number. Yeah, okay, so that's 11 and 1150 So what we're looking for, we're looking for the largest positive integer, and you guys may be, you can, you can just see the answer. It's got to be 11, right? But technically, that's the floor. That's the floor of 11 and 1150 And again, I'm being a little too formal here, you know, but uh, anyway, that's how you would do it. The, the floor function just chops off the, the decimal piece, if you will. It's called the greatest integer function. That's equal to 11. All right, so that's the answer we're looking for, y'all, folks. Uh, M equals to 11 is the largest integer that bounds the graph of this function. And, y'all, it's kind of neat. If you use technology to graph this, you'll see this thing always oscillates above uh, 11. You can see the space and then whatever this, whatever this, this is what, uh, point uh, two two, I guess. This would be 11.22. Uh, but it's kind of nice to actually see it work out. You can actually graph it, use your favorite piece of technology to graph it, and you'll see that this integer is the largest integer that bounds the graph of this function from below. Thank you for viewing.